live. All right, we're live. Welcome, 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 everyone. Yeah. So tonight we have a killer show for you. Killer show. Um, welcome. Hopefully you guys are joining us for Monday night. And uh, we'll get a few more people joining in. Tonight we have a special um, two-hour demonstration on painting latex eyes. So painting eyes on latex masks, such as our lovely friend here. So um, we are all prepped, ready to go. But before we start, we'd like to thank all of you for joining us tonight and um, hope Hopefully this is a little bit of a treat for you guys. I know a lot of people have questions about this process. Um, a lot of people I've talked to are always asking me how, uh, you know, questions about latex masks in general. So hopefully we can answer some of those things tonight. And uh, joining us tonight, we've got our usual crew here. We've got Ryan with us, uh, Ryan Endersby, and we got Sam Catarasano. Yeah. Oh, Say hi, guys. Hey, everybody. All right. And uh, so we're going to start off as usual tonight. Uh, Ryan, why don't we start off with you, and let's just acknowledge all the people who are with us right now joining us and uh, just give a little shout-out and thank you and say hi to everyone. All right, Casey. We've got, uh, you know, our subscriber count is is cranking up and up and up, and as the shows go on, we've got 26 folks, 27 folks watching at the moment, and Rad. Anyone that actually you know sent in a, a chat message, I'll start from the top. We've got Mr. John Eubank. We have Ashley Bosworth, Creative Mutation, Jacob Cherry, Jason Giaconetti. Sorry, Jason, if I butchered the last name there. <laughs> uh, Magneto Creations. We have Kevin Young and Mr. Brian McCrudden and mm. BTC. Right on, right on. Thank you guys for joining us. Um, I'm sure we'll get more coming in as always, and um, appreciate the, the support that you guys are giving us for the live stream. Can't do it without you guys. Um, before we jump in tonight, we're just going to do that quick reminder. Um, as we've talked about so many times, we have this giveaway coming up. Okay, As we reach 1,000 subscribers on YouTube, we will be giving away a free set of these busts, 10 free sets of these busts, fully painted. So you might be one of the lucky winners. So make sure you are um, hanging out with us. And once we get to that thousand, we will announce all the lucky winners of these lovely busts. <laughs> all right. So check that out. There they are. Of course, these are not painted. We're going to paint them up all nice, each one of them. They're going to be cool. And you can put them on your fridge or whatever. Scare your, scare your grandmas next door. All right. So, that being said, there's a lot to cover tonight. We have tons to go over with such a small area. Eyes on masks. A lot of people struggle with this. A lot of people do awesome eyes on masks. Um, we will get into it tonight. And so what I've got in front of me is a mask I made and created that I sculpted many years ago called the Goblin. And I've painted it a number of different ways over the years. This is actually the first time I've painted just a fleshy, kind of creepy, fleshy version of him. And um, I really dig it. I think it's cool. It's more simplified than what was done before, but yet effective. Um, he's. I was working on his teeth today. He's got these little loose teeth that come out and look and get the grandpa gum and look. Ah, rah, rah. All right. So, and he's missing his upper teeth, obviously. But I'm going to, because he's way down the mask, these are uh, translucent resin. Um, I'm going to take them out. I know it looks a little weird. I'm just going to have to deal with gummy grandpa look for tonight. Because we don't need that in the way. And I'm going to kind of stuff this guy and get him into position for some eye painting. I always like to try to, I have my mask stuffed with like black trash bags. That's, that's really all you need. You know, just stuff it with that and see if I can get... Um, I might even throw some paper towel up in there just to keep him from shifting around on me so much. Okay, get him to hold his position. So we're going to focus right on these eyes. And um, so we're going to be doing a lot of paint mixing tonight and adjusting and all that kind of stuff. So hopefully you can follow along with that. We'll try to take it slow and easy, but, you know, 
Got to get it done. So let's jump in. Let's jump in. Let's get going on this thing. All right. So what are we going to do first? We're going to check our airbrush. Make sure airbrush is working. It is working. We've got a couple different airbrushes here. I'll talk a little bit about airbrushes. I'm not going to get too crazy. I'm going to assume you guys know what you're doing with airbrushes. Um, apologies, we will have a little compressor noise going on, um, but we'll have to bear brief. with it. Yeah, it should be brief. All right, so I'm going to remove the front cap of my airbrush here. This is this the protector that protects the needle, and um, I like to remove that out of the way before I start airbrushing anything fine or kind of, uh, you know, that needs detail or needs to be, you know, finely done. Just be careful you don't bend your needle. Um, that one's probably bent. I'm just going to deal with it. So first things first. What we're going to do is we're going to mix our base color for our eye. Okay, pretty simple. And we're going to just, I got some colors pulled out here. I use all kinds of different acrylic paints. Some are my own. Some are FW acrylics. Some you'll see are uh, these uh, Citadel... Uh, paints, you know, there's all different types of paints out there that you can use. Um, what we're doing is painting very thin layers of acrylic on the mask. I mean, the eyes will be heavier, but they're going to get glossed in the end anyway and sealed. This latex mask, which is flexible, has all been painted that way except for the base coat. The base coat of the mask is a flexible thing, which we will go over when we get into painting masks down the road in another stream. Uh, but it's basically prosade mixed with acrylic. Um, okay, so first thing I'm gonna do is grab this dark blue here. This is actually, uh, what is this, Warlock blue from Freak Flex Paints. And I put a little bit in the cup. You don't need like to waste a ton of paint on this. Just so, It's just some eyes, and I'll put a little black into that. Make that dark, dark blue. Want a real dark blue. You want pretty dark. I'll put a few more drops in. So we're just going to use little bits of paint at a time here. And I like to get it pretty dark. Because this is going to end up being your base. And you're, you're, you're really only going to see a small edge of this anyway in the end. This, uh, this color. You're not going to see much of this color we're going to cover it up but you're going to see that ring that makes the eye <clears throat> all right so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to take some water and just put a little bit in to get that to flow a little bit better you know just so it's a little bit has a little bit more flow to it and then i'm going to put a little bit of alcohol in just a squirt not too much and the alcohol that I'm using is 99%. Okay, so water and alcohol. Water first, though. Don't, don't put alcohol straight into the paint. It might gum it up. You also have to learn which paints are um, able to accept the alcohol without having too much problem. So it's almost like a black tone here, blackish blue tone. Um, very dark. So um, usually what I do is I have a paper towel and I'll just practice doing some little circles, you know, get some circles down, you know, warm up a little bit, you know, <clears throat> and right now I'm doing very terrible circles, <laughs> but that's okay because we'll hone it in. So yeah, I just practice. This is a, a good technique to practice. Uh, you know, you can practice at home easily, just making circles. You can do tricks like this. I teach a lot of students this. You know, you spray a light circle like this, right? And then you come in and you spray like a tight circular dot. And I can tell my needle's a little bent because it's not spraying a nice even circle. So, but again, I'll deal with it. Okay, so um, we have a little bulge here on this iris so um, we're gonna go ahead and start spraying and so what I like to do is obviously make sure your airbrush is working before you go paint on your mask make sure everything's good and then we're gonna just start basing out this eyeball
you know, little by little. And while we're at it, we'll start doing this one too. That one's not done, but I'm just going to go ahead and start mapping this one. Now this one's kind of almost covered up. So you're not going to see as much of that eye as you do on the other side, or as much of the iris. Yeah, there we go. It's coming to life. So I'll just keep facing it out. <laughs> and I keep doing circular motions until I, you know, basically get the eye to be the size that I want. And there'll be a little bit of overspray. We'll clean that up after. It's getting there. Just need to flush out a little more of the bottom, bottom end of it there. There we go. And then we've got to go a little bigger on this side. Yeah, it's a little more of your half moon shape. <clears throat> now, I don't worry about getting overspray on the lids either because I can go back and fix that as well. Instead of like worrying about all that, I'll just go back and easily fix it. It's not a problem. You just go back with paints and, and tidy up with some reds and stuff. All right, so there's basically our base coated eyes. Now, um, we have some overspray we want to clean up just to tighten it up a little bit. So, but before we do that, it's good to always clean out your airbrush before putting a new color in. And we're going to do most of that with just some water and spray out the color. You can even hold it up and back bubble it like that. Push the paint back out of the tip. If there's any down in there, it'll get it out of there. And then we just keep clearing that out. Now, it's good to do this because if you don't, you could get paint clogged down in the bottom, uh, down in the uh, that tip there, down at the very cone that the paint has to travel through. That's a big problem for a lot of airbrush artists, you know, that run into that. So it's good to clear it out. Sometimes we'll even run a little alcohol through as well. Um, but, you know, uh, water does the trick for now. All right, so I'm going to set that color aside because I don't need that right now. <clears throat> Just get it out of our way. Now, what we're going to do here is mix up kind of like the base color of the eye. And as I recall, I used three colors to do this. So, I think we used a little bit of this, which is kind of a yellowy beige. Pretty thick stuff, so I'm going to thin it out a little. Come on. All right. Hopefully that's enough. A little bit of gray. Kind of a warm gray. And some white. Quite a bit of white. And I'll use the back of this brush to just stir that up. Now we're not using, you know, white, pure white, white, because it'll just be really stark and over, overdone. 
Definitely want more white in there. Now, sometimes I use, you know, straight white for eyes. I've done that before. If I really want the eyes to be glaring, but I, even then I tone them down quite a bit. But, uh, you know, for this, we're just going to go ahead and a um, little more white. We're going to go ahead and <clears throat> not go crazy white so that the eyes look a little more aged naturally. All right. Because even here, you know, it looks against all the other colors going on, it, it looks pretty much white. But it's not white, white. It's like an off white. So that's a good, good way to go. Okay, now we have our color. Now we're not thinning this color at all. I think it'll flow just fine through the airbrush. If we run into trouble, we can, uh, we can always uh, thin it a little bit with water. Um, okay, so what I'm going to kind of do is carefully go into here and see if I can just sort of clean up around the perimeter and you have to get at these weird angles sometimes it's uh, not always the, the easiest angles um, it helps like you know we can't do it on the video but it helps if you're holding the mask in your hand like straight up looking at you and and down it, it makes it a li life a little easier to to paint but for demo purposes I can't really do that because you guys won't see what I'm doing <laughs> and that'll make it difficult but I'm just kind of cleaning up some of that overspray it doesn't have to be perfect you know it's like it can, it can be a little uh, just a hair uneven or whatever eyes aren't perfectly perfectly round you can get away with just a tiny bit off it can't be too off I mean it'll be obvious that your eyes oblonged or something but you can get away with quite a bit so you can see now it's kind of cleaning up tightening up the edge of that eye a bit so we're gonna attack basically we're gonna attack this from the outside and the inside and what I mean by that is uh, we're gonna spray this on the outside to clean up around that perimeter and then as we go through the inside of the eye and, and map it out, we will clean it up a little as well. Now I'm just carefully hitting. There's not a lot of white in this eye over here. So I have to be really careful. I don't blast a bunch of paint out. One of the things I can tell you guys, too, that especially those of you wanting to learn and or just learning this stuff, um, I have to tell a lot of students that, um, see, even I messed up right there. Look, see, made a mistake for you guys. I'm going to fix it. No worries. Water will take it off. So uh, one of the things I can tell you guys is if you pay attention to my finger, how little I pull back on the trigger when I'm painting. I don't pull back a lot heavy heavy like that because you'll squirt paint out all over the place or whatever or spray it blast it out so it's a it's a very controlled like almost um like leading up to so as i get close to the eye you know like let's say this is your eye here and you're cleaning up this surface around you know i don't go crazy like that but but i i lead up to that edge you know and i start pulling that trigger back so that i can control you know how much paint's coming out and how to get that shaped out so it's not you know just bam you know uh, uh, and then you got a big mess on your hands so it's very controlled uh, the trigger and you're pulling it back because these are a double action airbrush so that means you're pushing down for air pulling back to let paint out and when you're pulling back to let paint out you need to be very cautious about how far you're pulling back okay so now we're done with that color we got the eye cleaned up pretty good it's looking nice so far and I'm gonna do the same as before I'm just gonna clear out my airbrush here get another paper towel get a fresh one here and put a little more water in there 
Blah, blah, blah. And then get that out of there. All right. So. There you go. Your eyes are done. That's it. We're done. No. <laughs> no, we're far from done. I'm just teasing. All right. So next thing. Now I'm going to do these eyes two different ways. I'm going to do one eye blue and I'm going to do this eye blind. So you're going to see two different things going on. Um, but we'll get to this one first because this one's the most work. So we'll start with the blue eye. Now, um, the next thing I like to do is mix up a, a kind of gray blue tone that um, we're going to go on in the inside of that black eye, okay? And um, that dark blue black, it probably looks black on camera, it is very dark. So we're going to go in there with an airbrush now and we're going to actually sort of start circular hazing in the center of that eye and work out but leave just a little edge showing of the dark iris so that you get that nice dark edge to the eyeball uh, to the iris sorry and uh so again it's just some careful airbrushing you know in a circle practice at home on your napkins and paper towels you'll get it down the more you practice the circles you'll get it and um okay so what we're going to do here is we're going to take three colors um and we're going to start with our blue again right this is our freak flex by badger paints by the way freak flex warlock blue for warlocks you know cast spells magic things i don't know who named that paint but it's awesome and then we've got some, what is this, ghost white or something like that here. It's just white. Ghost white, come on. It's just white. All right, so what we get from those two now, if we mix them, is obviously you mix white into dark blue, you get a light blue. So we get more of a cyan blue or a sky blue. Okay, and then you're going to take a little bit of black, or I'm going to take a little bit of black. Unless you're following along. And I'm gonna put like a drop or two in. And I'm gonna check that out and see what we got. And it's not too shabby. It's a little bit dark. So what we're gonna do is go back, put a little white and a little more blue. Because it's a little bit dark. You're gonna get paint on your hands, by the way. So just get used to it. <clears throat> I always got paint on my hands. All right. And so we're looking for a gray blue. Why? Why are we looking for a gray blue? He's got blue eyes. Well, because people with blue eyes are usually grayish blue. They're not like contact lenses where they're fake blue. Um, if you're trying to look like, you know, Kim Kardashian or J-Lo or something like that, you know, then that's up to you. But uh, that's all good. I get it. But everyone's going to be like, that's a fake eye. That's fake blue eyes right there. So real blue eyes, if you study them enough, you know, I mean, look, they're all different. Everyone, some, some are brighter than others, but they shouldn't be these bright, bright cyan, you know, super bright blue looking eyes, you know. Um, you want to be careful about that if you're looking for realism, you know, look at real eyes and study them. Uh, also know that, you know, as you paint these on and this looks very gray um you know it's gonna be a little brighter than you probably think so keep that in mind but you may want eyes to be more popping on your mask i don't know it's up to you that's up to you that's one of those things it's like a coffee what's your favorite coffee and i'm going to test this out and it still looks a little too gray to me i think we ended up pounding a little too much black in there so what i'm going to do is empty my paint brush my airbrush and I'm going to clear it out again real quick and then what we're going to do that's good enough is I'm going to pop a little more blue and a little more white in there because we do want some color just don't want fake contact lens color no Kardashian blue no Kardashian blue <laughs> <laughs> we're jokesters here you know, we're just messing around 
Um, okay. So let's see what we got now. And I'll, you know, grab a fresh paper towel here, give it a go. Well, let's just go with it and see how it looks. I don't know. <clears throat> if it doesn't work, we can fix it. That's the beauty of painting. You can fix everything. Well, not really, but yeah, some of it. <laughs> All right, so now we've got that color in there. We're going to go in, and like I said, I'm going to start in the center and work my way around, um, you know, carefully here. Um, takes a little bit of a steady hand. Don't get too crazy with the paint. Don't get crazy with the cheese whiz. Steady. Steady. It's pretty dark, so we're probably going to lighten it up some. All right, we're looking to leave that little dark ring around there. Now we're going to go do this eye. like it all right so now I'm gonna do the same old same old clean it out he's got blue eyes he must be Dutch he's a Dutch goblin from the Netherlands that's not their accent, by the way. That's a terrible accent. <laughs> My wife's going to kill me for that one. She's from there. Shh. Okay. All right. So, um, yeah, there we go. Anyway, so we've got our first three steps down, basically, right? So we've got our base color, cleanup. It's still some cleanup, always cleanup. You're going to be chasing and cleaning up. That's the way it goes with stuff like this fine, delicate things. Uh, a little bit is fine if, you know, like I have a little bit of blue haze over the black. It's totally fine. Um, it'll look natural. If you really look at eyes, there's a bleed out to them too. They're not like perfect circles, you know. I think when you do perfect circles, they actually look pretty fake, uh, especially on masks. So I like to leave it a little bit soft and hazier. A little bit of overspray is okay. Um, so don't worry about being like a perfect, you know, edged circle. It looks a little weird to me when I see that on a mask. I just, my, my eyes, I'm so used to looking at eyes and studying them, it just looks unnatural is what I'm trying to say. Okay, so uh, there we go. You know, here's our goblin. He's looking pretty cool and creepy. He's got eyes now. He's looking. All right, makes noise. Um, you know, he's got these boils on the other side of his head going on. He's turning Maybe he's starting to turn green like a real goblin. I don't know what's going on with this dude. All right, so uh, the next step. So from here, what I like to do is at this point is I usually like to go in and lay in a pupil, um, you know, just a fine black pupil, uh, just in the center of the eye as best I can, just so I can get some um, visual center point um, and work off of that from there. So, and to do that, all we got to do is use black okay black it is now we won't have to put black in the other eye pupil because you don't see it really the pupil is almost covered and it's blind so we're not going to do it we're going to keep it we're going to keep it pupilless although i don't like <laughs> this, you know, when you have, I have, a, I can tell I have a slightly bent needle just because it won't sp spray a nice circle. So that's always scary when you're doing something like this. But okay, well, let's let's go for it. Let's just try it out. 
wish me luck. Here we go. Um, so we're going to go and I'm going to carefully try to aim this. I'm going to keep it kind of small like that. Boom, I did it. Yay. Everybody cheer. We need a cheer thing. Yay. <laughs> Cord keeps getting stuck on my table. Do one of those applause sound effects where you play it and then immediately it cuts off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you guys at home can just do it yourself. <laughs> Build built-in sound effects. Um. So there we go. We've got our pupil. Stop getting stuck, cord. You're driving me crazy. All right. So now we've got the pupil laid in. Now you know we'll probably end up uh, refining that later more and maybe going a little larger. But it gives me a nice center point to work off of, like I said. Because at this point, usually what I do... Ow, I just poked myself with the airbrush. By the way, that will happen if you um, don't put your protective cap back on. Yeah. So, yeah, you don't want to get poked. Hurts. All right. So, um, I mean, I didn't get poked. I didn't even get a, you know... What's that? I didn't even get a... Oh, are you okay? No, I'm no, no. I, I <laughs> no. I was I was gonna say I didn't even get a vaccination for that. Like, <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> All right, so you, like, you want a band -aid? <laughs> Yeah, bad dad joke. All right, that wasn't even funny. All right, so here we go. All right, so I'm gonna. I I've got a couple really fine, fine, like really fine, fine brushes here, um, and. Uh, yeah, so these bad boys are for, you know, what I use for doing eyes. And because what we're going to get into now is I'm going to start going in with lighter gray blues and start working in all those really fine hair-like squiggly patterns that you see in a human eye when you get it really close to it and, and see it and look at it, you know. So uh, we want this little strands, fibrous strands. So... Um, and what I usually use is like for a mixing thing is just like a paper plate, you know, you can mix all your colors on. Um, now the beauty with this is since we have this gray blue mixed up, we can actually just take some of it and uh, put a, pour a little bit onto our plate. Like so. A little more. If you live in California, like I do, paint dries fast, so got to work quickly. Now I'm just going to add some white and lighten it, you know, a few shades so that basically I can start painting on there. I'm going to try something new tonight I've never tried before. I'm going to try to put a little bit of this. Now, this is a uh, thinning solution. Uh, what is it called? Citadel. Hold on. I'm blind, you guys. Lamian medium. Lamian medium, I guess, is what it's called. So I'm going to take... Actually, the stuff just pours right out, so you got to be a little careful. So, And you don't need much. You just need, like, if I can get get a little bit out, just a few drops. Um, so why, why am I doing that? I'm going to try this technique. I used it on the teeth, but if I could show you the teeth here. So when I put this brown and blended it out, I used just that liquid to kind of blend out and soften that. Actually, a buddy of mine had turned me on to this trick. Uh, he's with us tonight, John Eubank. Thank you for that. And, um... You know, he, he told me, oh, yeah, I use that to blend out paint, you know, especially the thicker paints. Um, anyhow, okay, so now I'm going to come in here and we're going to start, and I may have to lighten this. You know, you just have to try it out and see how it looks because it might be a little bit too dark. So, and it is. I'm going to put a little more white in. You know, got to go a few shades lighter than the base coat. 
get uh, you don't want too light though you don't want to go too light all right let's try this now and I like to sort of just um, here I'll demonstrate this it's nothing special or anything like that it's not rocket science but you know I load up my brush with paint and then I like to kind of take like as I rotate the brush this way take most of it off right because you don't want a ton of paint on there and that that medium I stuck on there it's just gonna help the paint flow off the tip of the brush and then I'm gonna try to paint these squiggly veiny lines going in a circle around the eye and some will branch off of one another now you know demoing this is not the easiest thing so you know if I'm a little sloppy just know that when I'm by myself not without a camera on me and people watching it's a little bit more uh, easier to uh, you know mess around and and tweak things so doing it live is a little trickier but I'll, I'll do my best to to keep it professional guys and get it get it in there as nice as I as I would I got to do a nice job because this is for a client and he's probably watching for a buddy of mine, this mask. Uh, by the way, I'm, I'm, you know, this is just a, a shameless self-advertising here. I'm sorry, you know how it is. Show. Artists, artists have to advertise and and be shamefully always, you know, posting their, you know, hey, I'm doing this and doing. That. Anyway, so I'm having a sale on my site it was a it was started as a flash sale but i decided to let it go for a few weeks just to give people time it wasn't really much of a flash sale uh because it's lasted like two weeks now but I, I got this i'm going to this weekend i'm pushing it one more week um you can order paints and get di a big discount and on everything and um, i have this mask up there i think is on sale and um and stuff like that and when you order masks from me you can contact me and ask me about custom painted versions of them and stuff like that but i just mentioned it because you know those of you that want um want to get something and save some coin because prices are going up on everything and that means you know i haven't raised my prices in years but i'm, I'm about to raise prices and just the way it goes now you know everything's getting more expensive it sucks where did um, they go for that flash sale uh, to go, sorry, yeah, good point. Uh, where do we go to that? Um, you're going to go to my website, and that's caseylovemonsters.com. So www.caseylovemonsters.com. And you'll see there's already a sale there, discount price. And that's if, you know, for you know those of you that want to get a nice piece of art, like a mask or a painted bus, or even if you want to paint your own stuff i have blank uh, now i don't have blank masks i don't sell blanks with masks but i do have blank model kits of different sizes and stuff that people like to buy but hey casey i've got you covered i've got the link right here in the chat for you oh dude you're the best thank you thank you thank you and sam thank you for reminding me to no actually give out my website because <laughs> uh also yeah on the bottom right hand of the, sc uh, the screen right now yes all right, so I'm done plugging my own crap. <laughs> All right, guys. So what I'm doing, just to, to give you a little insight, is I'm slowly, slowly light, lightening this gray. So I keep going to this white, right? I keep going back to my white. I put a couple more drops, right? And then I mix it about. Do, 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 do. Sounds like I'm singing that stupid children's song. Um, All right. Yeah, Jesus <laughs> Christ. <laughs> All right, stop it. Um, all right, so mix this around. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I just get, I go a little lighter, a little lighter. And you want to keep it nice and soft and keep it loose. And you know what, too? I'm going to switch brushes here. Sorry, uh, not to pull a little fast one on you guys here or anything. I'm going to clean this brush out. And I'm going to switch to my ultra fine, fine brush here. 
And this brush, I'm going to give some shout out credit to the man that turned me on to this. In fact, he gave me this one right here, just not too, maybe six months back. And uh, Jordu Shell turned me on to this brush. And this is a 100 zero, but I swear to God, it should be like 1000 zero, I think, because I've seen 100 zero brushes and they're not this fine. It's a Camlin Pro Plata, whatever that word is, 630. Um, anyway. I guess you can get these on Amazon, so take note. Jordu, turn me on to this. This is a killer brush for ultra fine. The only thing you got to know is take care of it and, and clean out the paint really well, carefully after each use. Because it is, man, it's like a hair, it's like an eyelash fine. And I'm not joking. I can't even see the, the, the brush, so. In fact, I can't even see paint coming off of it. <laughs> There we go. It is fine, man. Jordu Shell, that's the fellow who made the Supreme Intelligence. That's the guy, yep. That's the man there. Um, friend of mine, been known him for a long, long time. Amazing mask maker. And I know all the mask makers out there listening know who that is. Does some amazing work. And um, yeah, he turned me on to this specific brush that he found and it is fine man i mean i'm not joking i know i'm like repeating myself here but if, if you saw this in person it'd blow your mind because it is like an eyelash <laughs> sometimes i can't even get the paint to come off of it and that's and and i actually i gotta tell you guys this flow i know there's flow mediums but i'm telling you right now i mean this is the easiest time i've ever had painting an eye and I, I'm going to go ahead and just give credit to that. This stuff, this magic sauce, it looks like, you know, it looks like some kind of icky, milky liquid. But that stuff, you put a couple drops in your paint and holy cow, it flows right off. And so that's, that's a beauty right there. And it helps with this really fine... Uh, brush because i've tried painting with this brush you know just even standard acrylics and I, sometimes i struggle getting the paint to flow off such a fine uh, few hairs so um back in the day i used to just cut uh, i would take a as fine of a brush as i could find at the art store and i would cut it down to something like this because i couldn't find this but now that you know this exists it's like well no need to bother cutting the brush down. Yeah, I just cut it with a razor blade, you know, cut. And uh, you get a much finer hair, like hair lash type brush. Okay, so now we've got lighter and lighter. So if you can, can you zoom in on that eye for them? They can see all that crazy, craziness. Now I'm going to go a little lighter. I'm just going to take this couple more white drops. Just keep pushing that. We're using the same color. Just going lighter and lighter and lighter. Okay. Oh, look, I got white paint all over my finger. Not... I've done that so many times. I've had paint on my hands, touch my mask, and then later realize, oh, there's a bunch of white paint. I just put all, oh my God, that's the worst. So be careful. All right, let's see if we can get this to play ball. Yeah, 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 you. Yeah. Going to be a little quiet here. Now, back in the day, everyone remembers, or a lot of people ask me about a demo I did when I was in my 20s for an old... DVD uh, effects, what was it called? Uh, Gary Barth did it. Effects, oh my God, sorry Gary, I'm going to forget. Movie effects, DVD, and I did this like very long demo on some eyes. And I told everybody about watercolors and, and how to do it with watercolors and this and that. And, you know, I don't really do that anymore. <laughs> You know, uh, a lot of people ask me about it, but uh, I stopped 
using the watercolors, um, not because they don't work or anything. I mean, they work. I just found that I could get acrylics to work fairly similar. You know, they, I could do the same, achieve the same look. Uh, just, I got, you know, watercolors are expensive if you want good ones and there's a little hair on there. And, you know, after time, it's just like, you know what, I could, I can pull this off with just acrylics. So, and now there's like these nice thinning mediums like I just showed you. You just, you don't need to do it with watercolors. Um, but you can, I, I did do it and I showed it on that demonstration. I get asked about it even to this day and it's like, man, that demo is ancient. That was when I was actually a, <laughs> almost a kid. <laughs> uh, maybe not a kid, I was like 25. Feels like forever ago. Um, okay, so that's about as much craziness as I'm going to do on that right there for the moment. Um, and now what I'm going to start doing is I'm going to go back to my thicker brush. And, um, uh, oh, you know what? I'm missing, I'm missing a color. Give me one sec, guys. I got to grab something. I apologize. I just realized I tried not to miss something. Sorry, bring the camera over there. No, nope. <laughs> just follow me around the studio. No, that'd be a, 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 a bad since that's out there, and nobody's supposed to see that. All right, <laughs> yeah, we got secrets. We got secrets, man. We got secrets. Um, I think this will work. Let's let's give it a. Yeah, I'll make it work. How about that? I'll make it work. Sorry about the pause there. I realize I don't have any brown over here. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go in and actually put, if you look, uh, sometimes if you look real close at like close-ups of eyes, I mean, I suggest going on, um, oh, geez, you know, searching on the web. You can find close-ups of people's eyes. and There's beautiful close-ups of eyes, actually. And um, one of the things you'll notice sometimes is it's not just all blue. Sometimes there's like freckles in the eyes. Like, I mean, I don't mean literally freckles, but you'll find like a little brown spot or a yellowy orange spot. So I like to put that stuff in there too. It makes the eye look more realistic. So um, I've grabbed some uh, real dark brown and some yellow here. And I'm gonna just put a little bit of this brown um, on my plate here. This is a very dark, I mean, this is a great brown, by the way, if you're, um, this is a, a contrast color, so it's already thinned, um, but it's not too thin. By uh, sit it down and put a little yellow here. This is kind of a mustardy yellow. This will give us kind of a greeny brown look here. There we go. And if we want a warmer brown, we can add a little red on this side. Right. Then we can take a little over here and warm it up. All right. So now we have these two browns here out of one color, basically. And what I what I like to do is, uh, like I said, put little, just little spotty um, indications in a few places here and there. You know, just just like. Okay, I'll put a little brown sort of spot there. Not a perfect spot, not like a dot, but kind of oval shaped, get a little shape to it, you know. And I may throw one here, and we'll throw like maybe one other one here. And just a few here and there, right? And that's really all there is to it. I mean, it's that simple. If you want to brighten one up, you could take just straight yellow. If you wanted to brighten one up, we could take a little yellow and red together and make kind of an orange. More of an orange red mixed with some of that brown. You know, just a brighter overall tone. And we can kind of come in and, and maybe brighten up a spot or so here and there. You know, something like that. Nothing crazy though. Nothing where it's like bright reds and yellows that's not the idea you know just little freckles in the eyes okay and that adds a little dimension and and whatnot now the other thing i like to do is now go the opposite of what we did before with the lightening of the gray i like to take the original gray color that i had 
and um, we can deepen it a little bit with so I poured a little spot here and we're going to come in and deepen it with the blue here this original blue and we might even need a touch of black let's see what we get I'm just going to mix I don't know I kind of like that as is okay and now what I'm going to do with this okay is I'm going to come back and the you know how like there's these spaces now in between the eye uh sorry the all the white little lines and the gray little lines i'm gonna sort of come in here and i'm just going to darken some of them like so pow how you like that all right. It's looking pretty cool. And then let's see what else are we going to do with this bad boy. Um okay, I think I'm going to one last little step. I'm going to switch back to my tiny brush and we're going to go with one quite a bit lighter here with some of this gray. I'm going to take a spot over way over here and get real light with the gray. And I'm going to add a little more of my blending medium here. Just so we can get that flow control. Okay. Pick up some of that paint. It's got a nice flow to it. And let's come in, let's see if we can come in here and get a few very, very light lines happening. Just want to be like squig, very squiggly, lightning bolt-ish. Uh, I, well, I don't know if lightning bolt is the right thing, but very wavy, veiny, squiggly uh, kind of lines. They can cross over each other a little bit, or they can... Um, that sounds like a transformer blowing up. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully we don't lose power. <laughs> that would suck. Um, I suppose if we ever did lose power on this stream, just hang tight and we'll try to get back on the air. Because, sure. you know, with summer heat and all that, you can get those issues happening. We'll run an extension cord to one of the stores down there. So <laughs> in there. We'll just run into Carl's Jr. <laughs> Sorry, we're going to borrow your power. All right, so um, can I get a burger while I'm at it? <laughs> um... I'll take an impossible no i don't need that junk all right so so now we okay now we have you know pretty established eye um on this side here there's obviously a lot more to do with the outer perimeter you know we've been focusing all on the iris i gotta tighten up that pupil still maybe a touch bigger and uh you know we've got to age the eye down put some some stuff in there so let's do that so we got to do a little bit of aging down and some veins and things in the whites of the eye and just adjust all that stuff. But first, I suppose I better tackle the most important tough part, and that's the iris, uh, the pupil, the, the pupil there. Okay. Now, if you want a nice round pupil, there is an old school trick. Uh, I believe Jeff Death at Jeff uh, at Death Studios came up with, or maybe someone else did. He got it from I don't know, um, but I'm just going to credit Jeff because he's the, the first guy I ever seen do it. And he, you know, he uses the back of the brush. And if you want a nice round pupil, he just dabs it on. You got to be careful. You got to do it right. You got to be careful. Got to line it up. But you can. I'm just going to show this for to show it. It's not necessarily what I would do 100% um, on every mask. 
So I usually just dip the, you get a daub, daub there, a dot, daub, whatever, whatever you call that, um, a little bit of paint, and daub, dab, daub, what am, what am I saying? Dab most of it off. Okay. And then you take and you line it up and boom, like that. And you just touch down and back it off as quick as possible. Boop. And you get a nice center round eye. Now, I like to sometimes go in and, and, and haze it out or, or pull out of it. While it's wet, you could come in with your fine brush and drag some black lines out if you want to do those, like, you know, squiggly black leading into the white uh, or the light gray there. That's another trick. Um, but for demo purposes, I think I'm going to let that dry and then haze. So in the meantime, let's go to the outer perimeter, the white of the eye, and do a little work there because it needs, uh, it needs some help. And what we're going to do is we're going to start with this red here. This is a, actually, we're going to start with this yellow as well. Okay. We're going to push just a little longer before we do the artist share tonight. I want to get a, I want to make sure we get this eye almost done. So we'll do our artist share in just a little bit. Guys, if you hang tight, we're just going to push this a little bit further. So I'm mixing some red and some yellow together to kind of get like a orangey red here so red and yellow and then I'm gonna go back to a little bit of alcohol all right oh don't drip that on my teeth man dang the choppers let's see what he looks like with the choppers in now he's got some other teeth up top that are gonna go go in the top there that are not there. He's biting down on that tongue and licking and blah. All right, cool, looking cool. I like it, me likes. All right, um, remember that old commercial of cereal? Mikey likes it. <laughs> I don't know why that just popped in my head. You know, those monster makers, man, they're a little cuckoo, you know? I think that's how we just entertain ourselves as we work. All right, so now what I'm going to do with this color is I want to kind of just start to give this eye a little bit of irritation, you know, like it's not uh, like he's like he needs Visine or something. So I'm going to kind of come in on the outer perimeter here. And this is where you can kind of come in and clean up some of that blue overspray down on the bottom lid. It'll take a few passes. I'm going to get the corners of the eye here with just a little red. Now, I'm not doing any veins. I'm just doing a light haze just to give the eye a general light irritation. See that? And that just, it's very fine, very subtle. And I'll do a little bit on this side. I don't want to do as much on this side because obviously it's closed down. So you don't want to get rid of all your white um, area. But you can do the corners a little bit. You know, you don't need to do as much as that, as that eye. And hit this bottom here a little. Let me just go around and irritate. That'll also help kind of shrink the eye down just a touch, you know, from all that white. Now I'm going to clear this color out, okay? Clear it out. Get rid of that one. You know, we don't need this color anymore. All right. And this time, I'm going to do almost the reverse of what I did. And I'm going to do more yellow. And what we can do is take our yellow, put a, a decent amount in the bottom of the cup there, and we'll thin it with a little bit of water. And then we could take this thinned red that we already thinned and just put a little touch in. Okay. And then we have more of a, you know, Indian yellow sort of tone, if you will. Or I don't know what you'd call that. In and out red. Yeah. <laughs> Did you say in and out ranch? Yeah. <laughs> uh, is it yellow? Ish. I don't know. <laughs> Ugh, no. All right. Uh, just kidding. All right. So now I'm going to take this yellow tone and just kind of hit the corners of the eyes gently, not too much. All right. And just give a little yellowing to that eye. Kind of ages it down a little. All right, now we're done with that color. See, quick little steps, quick little steps. Nothing crazy. You can do it easy peasy. 
ugly yellow squeezy. All right, now I'm rhyming like an idiot. <clears throat> All right, so. And um, let's see, what else are we going to do real quick here? Now, uh, I think it's time to hit that pupil before too long here. Let's just go in. Even though I did a nice round pupil in there, I'm going to just give a little bit of a, of a softer rounded circle. I like to keep the pupil small just because it makes the monsters look more evil, if you will. You know, if you do a too large of a pupil, they start to look friendly, like they're, they're, they're your buddy, best buddy or something like that. Like, hi, <laughs> you want them to, you know, a smaller pupil is, is more evil. Okay, so what we're going to do here is very carefully. You did all that work, so you don't want to mess it up. All right, I think I'm pretty happy with that. I'm not going to push my luck because I was like holding my breath there. <laughs> <laughs> now if you have a micron airbrush like i have one here which i'm not using but you can use a micron it gets a little bit finer spray for you i have this uh, double action micron this sucker is like crazy super thin hairline thin spray you can use that if you have one if if not just you know i'm using a basically an eclipse you're watching me do this whole eye with an eclipse which is a cheaper cheaper iwata Sometimes I use a Badger, uh, I like to also use Badger uh, uh, Sotar 2020 is like one of my favorite go-to brushes. Now the beauty of this other blind eye is we don't need to put all this work in because it's going to be blind. So we're going to do uh, something else to it. We'll get to that uh, the second half. So uh, what we're going to do is pause. Now we've got that in, so I'm real happy with that. We only have a few other steps to finish up this eye and then we can go to this eye. So now's a good time. We're going to pause. And we're going to do a little bit of our uh, artist share tonight because we're at that time. And so it's looking good. Look at that. Now, uh, one thing to note before we get into that is this eye is a lot more blue on camera than in person. I just want you guys to know that this eye is more gray blue in person than what you see on camera which you know just keep that in mind when you're painting so when you mix your colors you might want to tone them down just a little more than what you see on camera all right let's pop his dentures in give him some life yeah. make some sound effects all right we're going to put this guy aside for a minute because we're going to share tonight uh something special here that I have. Is this too tall for you? No, I can pull back. Sorry. Is that too tall? Are we seeing over? No. No? I'm seeing like the tip tops of those three right there. Oh, okay. Um, so, well, here I can do this. Let's get, let's get this down just a little bit just so I'm not so high up there. Okay. Alright, there we go. There he is, all his glory. Lord of the Pit. So if you're a Death Studios fan, then you know who sculpted this. And his name would be Jeff Death, the owner of Death Studios. My buddy of mine for many, many years. I've known him. Never met him in person, funny enough. But we've been friends for a long, long time. And I've talked to him on the phone, I don't know how many times, a bazillion times over the phone. So I feel like he's a good friend. I've known him forever. And Jeff has been a longtime inspiration. Death Studios is probably the most direct link besides Monster Makers for getting me into mask making. I mean, uh, besides my childhood stuff, which is like uh, Be Something Studios, Don Post masks, and all those things. I mean, Death Studios is the company that really got me launched into making masks more than any other only because... Um, it's the one I discovered just before I started making math. So it's what got me excited about doing it. And, and when I was a kid, when I was little and I, and I, and I was about six, seven, eight years old. And I talk about this in my, uh, sideshow 
artist profile that we did a few years back. I, I talk about this whole thing. When I was a little kid, I would go to the local mall. It was a mall in Arcadia, California, and I would see these masks hanging in these, you know, next to this Foot Locker, which was a Hallmark store. And they would hang the masks from the ceiling from front of the store all the way to the back. Um, it was the most coolest display ever you could ever think of. And for a little kid like me who loved monsters already, it was just like, oh my God, you know, overload, right? And so I would run. Well, I was trying on soccer cleats. You know, my mom always tried to get me, you know, you had to buy soccer cleats. It was soccer season. And I'd run out of the store. I did this. I swear. I ran out of the store in my socks, jumped out of the cleats, ran out of the store. Yep, those work. Bye. My mom's like, wait. Nope. And I ran to the other store next door, uh, right next to Foot Locker. And um, they had all these masks hanging. And I was just drooling, just like, oh, I just stare at them and want them so bad. I remember seeing fang faces and, and, and uh, a melted man and from B something studios, which I have a copy now. And um, anyway, it was hugely inspiring, but it was later in my life when I was like age 25 or so that I discovered death studios and discovered like, Oh, I want to try making masks. I always loved masks. I'd collected some, but I never tried it. Cause I was, as a kid, I wasn't aware of um the fact that somebody makes these things and sculpts them and all that i just didn't pay attention to that i only knew that i loved these things and they were fascinating to me uh and they made me very happy obviously so <laughs> i discovered this studios one day this was right when i was getting ready to switch what my career goal was which um i was into the action sports skateboarding snowboarding and all this stuff and I got out of that and was like kind of done with it for a while. And I was like, you know, I want to do something else with my life. So I got into looking up masks and looking up who's making these things and where do they come from and blah, blah, blah. And Death Studios came up and that's who I discovered. And Jeff's work and, and the work of many others who have sculpted for Death Studios is what got me going. And then with the help of Monster Makers, being that they had like this mask making kit you could order, it was like you could order a a mask making kit like latex plaster clay you know everything you need to get started so i ordered that and i waited months for that to come and it showed up and i was so excited and of course i failed <laughs> and it was the worst experience in a way because it was like so heart-wrenching that i couldn't do this but i didn't know what i was doing right i was just trying to do something that i thought i would love doing and so i kept at it as for many many years and then started to get pretty good and better and better and over the years and get some little jobs here and there and started painting masks for guys and doing all this stuff and uh so anyway but jeff's company death studios is really really uh i have to pay homage to because and and thank jeff because it's all the years of his hard work in doing this that one day i would discover uh his company and the work coming out of it that would inspire me so greatly um i used to have a collage of all these I, I i don't know how much printer ink i burned through of my mom's printing out picture after picture of these masks from death studios so i could have this wall of inspiration and so yeah it was it was huge you know it was a huge huge uh, uplift and and ins inspiration and jeff's work is just legendary at this point you know we all know who he is we you know if you're a mask guy or a collector you know there there's a facebook group for death studios on facebook and um i highly recommend you check it out and if you're not familiar with death studios masks definitely check them out they are american made uh super quality in the usa here he's been doing it that way since he started these aren't mass produced out of the states. He does all the work himself. He's basically a, a one man or small crew operation, mostly him. Um, and this mask, by the way, is called Lord of the Pit. One of my favorites, personal that Jeff did. And um, this actual copy you're looking at is the catalog copy out of the catalog from the 90s. <laughs> And the funny thing about this, Jeff told me when he sent this to me, he knew I was in love with this thing and wanted it. And of course, this is just the you know the first pull he took out of it. Well, when he pulled it, he pulled it a little early, and it pulled off the tip of the ear here. <laughs> so the little story behind this mask is you see this piece missing, and that's why when you look at the catalog shot, it's shot from this angle 
<laughs> so you don't see the ear missing. Jeff didn't want to make a whole new one, so he just made this work and shot it from this three-quarter angle. So when you see the catalog shot, that's what you see. But I'm happy to own this. The latex is still in great condition. Crazy unbelievable, you know, all these years later. And I cherish this piece and keep it in my collection. So here's to Jeff at Jeff. Uh, here's the Jeff at Death Studios. Thank you, Jeff, for everything, all the inspiration over the years. Um, and here's to many more years with Death Studios and your masks. And uh, thank you so much. And I know all the mask community appreciates everything you've done and all the hard work you've done. Uh, we can't thank you enough. And sharing all your knowledge over the years. It's been awesome. And you've inspired me. And I know you've inspired many others. So here's to you, Jeff. Thank you so much. All right. Lord of the Pit, time to say goodbye. Ugh. I know. Sorry. Gotta go. We got eyes to go. It belongs to the museum. Yeah. <laughs> it's in the Casey Love Museum. <laughs> Which is just my garage. <laughs> All right. Back to Goblin. Back to Goblin uh, Town. Thank um, you sure, Casey. I'm, you know, a lot of us are, are huge Jeff death fans and uh like you said grew up with death studios and it's just you know every mask i've ever ordered from that that guy always high quality you're not getting a rush job you know he's just uh he really set the bar high and doing it decade after decade after decade the guy just won't quit no he doesn't he just keeps he's like a machine he just keeps cranking masks out over and over again yeah um with that ryan and i'm glad you joined in here um and uh appreciate that for sure because that is so true um i guess let's move into some questions on the process of what we've done on the eyes to this point let's try to hit some questions and then i'll cut it off and we'll continue with the eyes and and finish up and then try to fit a few more questions at the very end all right casey sounds great sounds great we've got um you know, stack up. We've got about four solid questions at the moment. Okay. All right. Um, let's see. Neil Leffler asks, how's painting full-size eyes, like on masks, different from painting eyes on smaller busts? Well, that's pretty easy. And that was from Neil, you said? That's right. Neil. Neil Sorry. Leffler. Okay. Hey, Neil. Thanks for the question. Um... I mean, honestly, it's as simple as they're larger. <laughs> the, the, the larger, the masks are larger, more life size. And so it's easier to paint those than say a tiny eye that, um, when you get down to say one six scale, like a 12 inch figure head, you know, you're not going to get as much of that detail in and it's more about broad strokes, if you will, where you are doing a highlight and a shadow and, all those things. I mean, you're not going to be painting tiny micro hairs in a one six scale eye. It's just not necessary. And it's just crazy if you tried that anyway, or wanted to do that. I don't think you'd, you could do it as, and successfully, and it would even be worth doing all that. Now, once you reach something like some of the busts you see behind me, um, I have a Cyclops over here, which you can't see, but in my case here, you guys can kind of see this case. I've got some eyes, you know, that size where I've attempted to do the same sort of process close to the same process and get all those little micro hairs in there. So basically painting, um, uh, yeah, he's kind of there, you know, you can see some of them there. Um, I mean, I definitely can get veins and all that stuff in there. I can get pretty detailed with, with that size eye. But once you go smaller than that, you know, quarter scale, you go lower than third or quarter, like, well even larger than third but like down to those smaller scales it's it's tough to get that kind of level of detail so that's the difference bigger eyes are easier smaller eyes are harder i hope that kind of answers neil's question awesome casey thank you for that one we've got uh, another great one here from franco carlosimo and uh he was asking during one part of the demo is that silicone paint or just acrylics and do you ever use a wet palette um, so it's not silicone paint. It is just acrylics. You're right. And thank you for the question. Uh, you said Franco, right? Uh, that's correct. Casey Franco, Carlo Miso. 
Franco. Carlos Simo. Okay. Thank you for the question, Franco. Yes, it's not a it's not silicone. It's it is acrylic paint, and um, they I well when you say wet palette, I mean I basically I'm using maybe water sometimes the thin, but in this case I was using the the thinner from Citadel that that we showed earlier. And so it's sort of wet palette. I mean, it's not like in the sense of where there's water laid down and, and, and that and whatnot. So it's just fluid acrylics and that's it. So it's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. All right. Next question. All right, Casey, we've got uh, John at Clay Kicker FX asks, every time I layer paint like this, it strips off the previous layer, even with Liquitex sealing. Do you have any advice for that, Casey? Sean, thank you for the question. Um, let me think. It's stripping the paint off. There's got to be something in that you're doing that's causing that. It shouldn't strip off. I mean, basically, what you're actually seeing me do tonight, I have not ever sealed those eyes. Not even after the base coat, not even during or any of that. Obviously, you've seen me painting this eye. And um, so there's no protective layer. That being said, though, you could try to take matte varnish and you could base coat your eye white and then spray your eye, your, sorry, <laughs> spray, yeah, spray your iris and your shape, you know, your round shape and then, and then lighten it up before you're going to start doing all the brush work. And then what you could do is take matte varnish and seal it and hair dry that so that you protect all those underneath base coat layers. Okay, and then because you're using matte, don't use gloss because it'll be hard to paint over that. You know, you'll be the paint will be beating up on you. Then you could take and continue your paint job on on top of that sealed layer, and that'll and that should fix the problem you're having. Because I don't know why you're having that problem. You shouldn't be if you're just using acrylics. You shouldn't be having that problem. If you're putting alcohol in, you're going to have that issue. The alcohol is going to take all the paint away, it's gonna immediately just come off. So it kind of sounds like maybe that's something that's happening. Um, First thing I thought of too, but alcohol. Yeah, so don't put any alcohol in there. I'm just using water and I'm using that Lamayan thinner, whatever that stuff's called from Citadel. Um, so just as you see what I'm doing tonight, I'm not putting any alcohol when it comes to uh, any of the brush work, the fine brush work of the eye. So. Try that, give that a shot, see if that helps solve your issue. Because I'm, if I saw what you're doing, I could better tell you, but uh, I don't know right off the bat if maybe you're using paints. Some paint, uh, be careful because some makeup paints have alcohol in them. I don't know if maybe you're using one of those or something. Uh, try to stick with just uh, FWs, um, uh, Tim Gore, Casey Love Paints, Badger, Golden, the, 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 the straightforward acrylic brands. Stick with those. Okay. Anything else, Ryan? All right, Casey, we've got, uh, we had the original four, then we've got a couple of good folks here asking asking a few as well. But for that fourth original question, we've got uh, Nina from Olivia Albin. Uh -huh. And he asks, or they ask, do you ever spray coats of varnish between the different steps to protect the work previously done? And I think that kind we of just falls in line it. with what you just answered a little <laughs> bit. Yeah, we just talked about that. You can. Um, I don't typically do that but you can do that for sure i mean if you need that little bit of safety net feel that that, that, that you know your paint's not going to come off or you're you're not you know, if you feel like you're going to mess something up or you feel like I'm, you might make a mistake on the next step then just you did all that work so just go ahead and seal it it's not going to hurt anything to do it just i would recommend you use a matte varnish like by liquitex and you know just do a light spray don't don't spray that to death on there you know it's just an eye area so just a light coverage let it dry really well you know you could use a hair dryer and then and then go ahead and, and go in and do it now the only way you're gonna take paint off at that point is if you put alcohol in there so don't put that just use waters and other things to thin your paint uh thank you for the question olivier right thank you for that question awesome all right, Casey, we've got a couple more coming in. Did you want to... Uh, let's hit them. Let's just go get... Let's get a couple more out of the way, and then we'll go right back to painting eyes. Right on, right on. All right, we've got a, a great question here from Kevin Young, and he asks, what is the best way to determine the right size iris in relation to the size of the eyeball? Uh, great question, Kevin. 
I just eyeball it. Ha ha ha. Um, I know bad dad jokes. Um, I'm a dad and get away with it. Yeah, eyeballing it is really the truth. I mean, I just basically now. Okay, one thing is the eye that I have placed in here. As I spoke about when you first saw me base coat it, you I told you there's like a bulge to the eye because. When I sculpted this mask, I used an eye with a bulge in, in where the iris is. So I can kind of basically see the size, the correct size. So I just follow basically that. Now, if you just have a round orb in there and there is no, you know, uh, uh, there's no bulge to the little bit of that bulge, that iris bulge, um, you know, just you just got to eyeball it and basically roughly see. Now, I mean, if it's a life-size mask that's roughly the size of your head, like this one is close to my head size, a little bigger than mine, then, you know, you can look at your own eye for an idea of size or whatever. Um, you'll know, though, I mean, if you do it too small, let's say you paint the eye too small and you step back and look, it, you're kind of going to tell because you're going to have way too much white showing. Now, I mean, this guy's eye is, is, is open, you know, he's making this expression, but you're probably going to have way too much uh, white of the eye showing or, or, or not enough. If it's too big, you've gone too big. So you kind of can tell if it looks a little, it should look to you you know correct or you know might look a little goofy if it's too big or too small so um but yeah you basically i i just eyeball it and i just go for it you know and and rough it out um that's the best i can tell you on that um give it a practice too. practice some some eyes roughly the size that you think you want to do them before you get started you know on a napkin just basically rough out and see if that hold that up and see if that looks about right and if it does go for it Cool. All right. Thanks, Casey. We've got uh, one last question pending here okay. with uh, Creative Critter. And they ask, uh, I think I've seen this before. Have you ever used yarn with clear two-part epoxy to create tiny veins in the eye? Or would you not suggest that technique? Um, I, I've seen it done. I, I've seen it done a lot. Um, I don't do it. I don't use it. Um, I actually prefer to paint the veins in myself. Um there you know when you get really close up on a microscopic eye you know it's probably raised a tiny bit the little red veins and stuff i understand that can be the case but i mean who's ever really that close to an eye to see that so you can do it it's a great way to do it and you can put it on and get really thin nice uh veins and all that and wiggle them around um it works it's a great trick uh definitely could do that um i i don't i just you're gonna see me tonight paint them in um it's just the way I always have done it and the way I prefer to do it. And sometimes I'm painting um, different red veins in there too. So like yarn is going to be one color, you know, or you could get multiple colors if you want. But sometimes I'll do lighter orangey red veins and it'll come in with the really heavy bloodshot red veins. So sometimes I like to do combos of different colors. So I prefer to be able to control that with the paint. Uh, sometimes I like the vein to be a little softer than the other one or 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 more transparent than the other one. So, yeah, I, I like to be able to control that with the paint. So I prefer to do it with paint, but I have seen that done. I've seen it done successfully. It looks great. Yeah, it works. You know, just do do what you do what you love to do. Whatever works best. Right on, Casey. Man, you rocked it. That's uh, that's all the questions we have so far. OK, great. Um, thank you, guys. All you guys for the questions. Appreciate it, um, as always. And um, let's get into round two on this bad boy so we can finish it up. All right. Round two. Here we go. I put my hat on backwards. I already got it. Straighten it out. All right. Here we go. So speaking of veins and eyes, we now have to do veins and eyes. So. That question coming last was great because that's what we're going to do right now. We're going to get into that. And just to demonstrate more of what I was talking about, we'll do the two different colors here. So I'm going to start with this uh, sunburn red Freak Flex paint and uh, use try and find a clean part of my paper plate palette here. I just like to use paper plates. You can throw them away after, you know, you don't need... Um, a special palette and all that if you don't want then you have to clean it off you just throw it in the trash and you're done and get a new one so i'm going to use some of this um you know thinning medium here that we've been talking about all night long it's working working really well so i think i'll stick with it and it's not attacking any of the paint which is good 
and removing it. And we're gonna go back to our crazy thin brush here. And so what I do is, what I like to do is I like to come in on the corner here. Now it's always easier to do the outside corner I find than the inside. The inside is always a little trickier to get the right angle. But I'm gonna come on the outside here. Oops, it's a little crazy. I have a brush here I can blend. Just blend this down a little like this. So see, if you make a mistake, you can always have a brush handy. You can uh, blend. I had too much paint on this little guy. I'm not used to paint coming off of this little guy so crazily. That's that's a new one. Usually, I struggle to get the paint to come off of this little tiny eyelash brush. <laughs> Come on, you know you want to. Well, we'll see. Maybe we won't get veins painted tonight. <laughs> We're starting to get something. All right. Let me, uh, Thin this a little more. I think uh, I think that's one of the things here. It needs a little more. This is that Bob Ross segment. Paint happy little veins. Happy little bloodshot veins in your eyes. <laughs> Casey, for the folks at home, I've uh, sent a link to that brush, found one on Amazon. They're sold out at the moment, but it, it helps us all get sort of a note on it. Yeah, what do they cost, $1,000? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah they, hopefully they got layaway. But uh, <laughs> What do they cost? I'm just curious. Uh, let's see. It looks like they're actually currently unavailable directly with Amazon. But yeah. I, let's see. Oh, so there's no price listed. No. Uh, Jeez. Is there a third party vendor? The thing is magically small. Yeah, it is. I swear it's like a eyelash. <laughs> like nose hair. <laughs> yeah. These are just made with nose hairs. Some dude's That's nose right. hair. Be sure to watch them first, folks. Yeah. It's, um... So you can see I'm just doing some red little veins there. These are pretty bright, though. These are not what I was typically expecting. So, um, And now you can airbrush veins, too, if you really have that control on the airbrush. I've done that a lot in the past, you know, airbrushed <clears throat> veins in there. I usually use my, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> I use my Micron. Oh my God, I'm having a throat issue here. I use my Micron to uh, to paint those types of veins. Man, I almost want this even thinner. It's really striking. Okay, guys, I'm going to use a little more interaction here quite a bit keep in mind when you do use these thinners that the paint needs time to dry <clears throat> it won't dry as fast as uh, typical typically would so you just keep that in mind there we go uh -huh. You know, once again, you're just making like squiggly squiggles, squiggly squiggles. Um, I'm going to add a little yellow too over here just so I can sort of tone down this red a bit because I want a, <clears throat> a lighter vein color as well. As I work my way around the top here. Oh, 
you know, just get some of those wiggly veins in there. So we got some dark reds, you know, in the corners, and then we got some lighter ones around the, the top. So you can see that now. It's looking beautiful. Um, what else? What else? What else? You can take a little bit of this. This is a blood, purpley blood red tone here. A little blue. See if we can get kind of a little bit of a purple, kind of a muddy purple, but might work. Let's see if we can kind of just clean up some of that overspray there a little. I may have to come back with some pinks and stuff and do this. Get the edge of that eyelid. <clears throat> Another thing you can do, too, is uh, you can take white while you're at it. And you can mix like a pinkish red tone or whatever here. You know, kind of a fleshy pinky tone. And you can come in here and just highlight that little that little thing there where you get the boogers. Nubbin. The nubbin of the eye where you get the boogers in the morning. You know what I'm talking about. You get that little crust. You're like, it hurts to get it out. You're like, ow! Or maybe you don't know what I'm talking about. Anyway. Crusty. Everybody gets crusty eyes. Come on, don't lie. Yeah, pretty disgusting. All eyeballs with the crusts. Oh, there. God, I got to make yeah. that now. That's a great. See, now we're coming up. Look at this the stream, and we're coming up with ideas for masks. I... Look at that. Ideas. Oh. Uh -huh. Look at all the puns tonight, man. One after another. I mean, you can't pay for this on a Monday night, can you? You're getting it free. They're like, that's it. We're done. We leave. We're leave. No, no, one guy's watching. No. All right, so <laughs> there we go. Now that's kind of cleaned up some of that overspray. I kind of want to show you guys how I deal with that because a lot of people probably ask. Um, and again, not, you know, nothing has been sealed here. And that eye is pretty much donezo. I mean, for the most part, I just got to seal it and gloss it and all that. I haven't sealed this whole mask yet. This mask is yet to be sealed. But now that I, that eye is in and done and looking good, um, let us go oh actually you know what i just noticed something that's bugging me uh -oh. i'm gonna i'm gonna mix a little red wash i'm gonna take some water to do this on my plate and I, I dipped into the red I'm just gonna get a wash like a, a wash is a very thin thin super thin watery red and i just want to dab over that little boogery thing where you get that crust because it's so pink i want to tone it down a little bit with some red whoop too much red Okay, so I'm going to soak that up. That's why I put water on it so I could protect. I don't make a, a new, I might make a mess if, I, if I'm if i not careful. And the wash is just going to kind of knock it down a bit and give it more irritation to match the bloodshot eye. There we go. Okay, I'm happy. I'm happy we can move on. All right, now let's go tackle this blind cataract eyeball thing here on this side that's the next step because we need to finish that one so just like we did um earlier in the video when we were you know lightening the center of this eye now we want to do the same with that eye but we want to use something very different um you know uh i like to use this light green bluish turquoise tone um from citadel it's uh a, like a real cool blue tone you know and it's thick stuff so we're going to thin it as well so let's take take our brush and just grab some and stick it in the cup there it's a great color very vibrant bright yeah all right all right and we're going to take our thinner once again our magic sauce 
mix this into mom's pancakes. It won't taste very good. All right. And probably thinned it a little too much because it's so hard to control that uh, bottle there. Let me just add a little more paint. Because just, you know, drops of that will thin paint like crazy. It's really, really strong stuff. But we do want enough pigment so that when we airbrush this, it goes on nice, you know. We get a nice coverage. Okay, so <clears throat> now the trick here we're going to do, we're going to take our airbrush. It's all clean. We're going to remove our cap again, exposing our needle. And we're going to pour in our paint. It's nice and liquidy. Liquidy. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start lightening this eye. And I'm going to kind of do my best to keep it uh, sort of a modeled effect to some degree. I mean... And one thing to note on this eye, I'm going to lighten down a lot of that uh, outer line. If I can get this, if I can get this to spray. Bear with me. Oh, I think I got some dried up paint on the tip there. Yep. All right. Well, anyway, as I was saying, I'm going to lighten up some of that outer edge a little bit. All right. Now... I'm going to clean that out of the airbrush. Just water. Mm -hmm. And I think I'm going to grab my original white because I want to kind of adjust this a little bit. So hopefully this is still sprayable. It's so warm in my studio that the paints are going to dry quick. So, well, it looks like we're in business. I'm trying to adjust this a little bit here. I have to hold this at a little bit of a weird angle, so you might not be able to see this. Okay, there we go. So I, I had, the eye was being kind of like, the shape was a little drawn out weird, weirdly. So I just adjusted that real quick with our base coat our white base coat, you know, the back <clears throat> whites of the white of the eye area. All right. So now I'm happier with that. Now I'm going to make a creamy yellow white, taking white paint and yellow paint. Okay. In my cup here. All right, I put a little water in this one, just a little bit. Get that kind of milky egg yolk kind of look. Let's see, are we a little thin? Mm. Now let's try it out, put a little alcohol in. I'm just using little bits of alcohol. Let's see if we're good. Might be a little too thin, but we'll see. All right, so now I test spray. 
as always. Okay, now what I'm going to do is come into the center middle here and start modeling a little bit of this yellow. Sort of milky or I'd say more like egg white yellow. Okay. That looks good. <clears throat> this eye doesn't take nearly as much time to do as the other eye because it's just some simple soft shadings of color. And then the last thing I like to do is, and you could do it with a brush or you could do it with, um, you know, your airbrush. I'll just, I think I'll just airbrush it. I'll just take some straight white. Again, thin it a little bit. A little bit of alcohol. Now, when I put alcohol, it's just a touch, a tiny bit. Just a little squirt in there is all I'm doing. And again, we'll see if this is uh, too thin or just right. I'm just going to clean off some of this paint all over the place. Making a mess. I'm a messy painter, that's for sure. It does look a little thin. I'm, I'm not liking that so there's no need to ruin all the work we've done so i'm going to try again hang on hold please um all right let's try this again come on do it right the first time all right i will here we go i think i just thinned it a little too much but let's see wouldn't that be funny if I did it again? <laughs> okay, that's better. That's better. I just thinned the other one a little too much. It's just I'm using such small amounts of paint, you know, it's hard to control. All right, so now we're going to take this white, and uh, we're going to concentrate more in the center of that yellow, milky area and brighten it up. too much. Now you can go back and forth with these colors. You know, now we can go back to our yellow. Um yeah, let's get rid of this. Just spraying the paint out. Go back to our yellow. And we can bring back, you know, because we did a little bit more white than we want. Kind of come in and yellow that down a little bit, right? Like that. All right, <clears throat> it's looking pretty blind to me. Cataract. And then let's take a brush and do a little brush work in there just to add a little bit more to it. So I'm going to put these paints aside. And then um, we can come back to some of our, we've got like a dark blue here still on the plate that's working pretty fresh. I'm going to put a little of this. Uh, magic juice or whatever this is in here. It's a Citadel, our thinner we've been using all night. 
And actually, I'll use a, probably not use this fine, fine brush because that's too fine for what I want to do. So what I'm going to do is switch back to my thicker, thicker brush here. Sorry, we're all over the place tonight because it's just, you know, I got to, this is how I usually do eyes. I just, I just go for it, go for it until it looks right. Okay, more thinner. Want a nice translucent blue soft paint that I can kind of control. Getting some thinner on my brush. So this is like a very translucent paint. And what I'm trying to do is just get some weird, random, splotchy, you know, organic, broken up stuff going on. <clears throat> Now this is risky, what I'm about to do, I'm going to take paint with alcohol in it, which is like almost a no-no, but I'm not going to brush it too much, I'm just going to dab here and there. Okay, so even though this has alcohol, I'm going to be very careful. Very, very careful. And that just gives you this weird sort of uh, random stuff happening in there, like scrambled eggs. I'm not brushing hard on there. I'm just barely touching it. But it kind of gives you this scrambly egg look going on there okay now i'm going to get some more of this blue if i can i'll see if this is even <clears throat> i'm gonna have to grab more here <clears throat> all right so what i do is just fiddle around with this thing you know until it's about right or until i like what i see so it's a lot of just fiddle, fiddling around That's pretty cool. I'd like to see a little more yellow in there, though, come into play. So I'll just come up into this blue, which will kind of mix with it, make it a little bit greeny, which is fine. I think that looks pretty nasty. All right, kind of like that. Okay, now, <clears throat> last, last, last. Let's put a few of them few of these veins in there, man. Right? Let's get some of the veins in there. Finish this eye off. So we're going back to that tiny little brush. That's basically the size of an eyelash. Let me get is this. Wait, that's alcohol. <laughs> Gotta make sure I'm not. Oh, yeah, see my paint dried up on me. Quickly, how how quickly that happens. Let's get some water. Earlier, there was a question about wet techniques. This is kind of you know wet paint here, painting.
So I'm just throwing <clears throat> some random veiny stuff around this eye, the outer perimeter. It almost looks like there's a weird little deformity in here, something going on. So I'm going to accentuate that like it's a weird injury to the eye or something. Bring a little red in there too for the hell of it. Why not? <clears throat> Remember, just Bob Ross that shit. Happy little veins. Happy little. Paint your happy little veins in there. That's looking pretty creepy. Yeah, this goblin. He got poked in the eye, man. Scramble eggs and Tabasco sauce. Yeah, he got scramble egg eye. With Tabasco sauce in there. All right. <clears throat> That's looking cool. I like that. Creepy. Freaky. It's like, ugh. What the heck happened to you, bro? Ran into something. All right. Now, uh, I'm going to take this blue and make that purpley purple. Can I just come in here a little? Clean up that. Edge of that eye. Oops. And then we had our little bit of that pink. Or if you want to, you know, make a <clears throat> an emo monster, you can put eyeshadow and or goth monster. You, know, you could put your uh, what are they <clears throat> little makeup on there? He's going to the rock concert or whatever, going clubbing. Your monsters go clubbing, I guess. I don't know. Put a little eye shadowy stuff actually it's you can do that i'm not i'm just joking around but no it does it does actually accentuate the eye sometimes i've done taken black and put like eyeliner and looking stuff on there and um sounds silly and funny and all that but um it actually does and can draw that eye out because when you have that kind of eyeliner black it really makes the eye stand out but i'm i'm, I'm doing the opposite here i'm doing this kind of pinkish um uh, edge or rim to the eye there and now i'm going over with a little bit of translucent red just to push it back a little bit okay and i'm calling that good man because that looks creepy cool Blah. let's put his teeth in he needs some teeth so he's not grandpa denture goblin he's and I'll be doing more teeth in there. We'll try to go on the Facebook message board once this is all done and wrapped up in a day or so. We'll post the final picture with the eyes glossy and cool. Now, when I go to seal the eyes, which I'm not ready to do that yet, unfortunately, we, we're not going to do that tonight. We'll cover that another time for you guys. Basically, I just seal them and then with varnish. And then once the whole mask and, and the eyes are sealed, then I mix up five minutes clear epoxy devcom epoxy and brush it on the eyes and they're nice and wet it's really nothing to it so i make sure they're sealed first before you do that um but yeah that's our painting tutorial for goblin eyes tonight and how to paint latex uh eyes on a latex mask and that's my approach how i do it um there's many other ways to do it we'll do another demo sometime in the future on painting monster eyes you know tonight it was more human based eyes but it showed you how to do a realistic eye human eye and a cataract blind eye with some veins and all the creepy stuff added in um and this was all in a two-hour process to do the two eyes so basically um my recommendation to you guys that are just learning or whatever you know take your time 
don't rush it. You don't have to do it in two hours. I usually take more than that on my own stuff and, and, and take my time and do a nice job. But I had the pressure tonight, so I had to do it in two hours. Okay. Uh, Ryan, I think we can hit some final questions if there are any. All right. All right, we'll do, Casey, we've got, uh, we do have a few, I've got everything logged, just in case we can't get to everything tonight, but we do have a, a small stack mounted here. We've got, uh, let's kick it over to Creative Mutation, and they ask, curious if the lower jaw insert was sculpted in unison with that head, or done after the mask was cast and formed to fit, is it, uh, as a second part to that, they ask, is it harder clay preferred for that purpose? Um, so good question. Thank you for that. Um, the way I did it was when the original wed clay sculpture was being done and I dug all the mouth area out, I did have wed clay teeth and gums and tongue roughed out very rough. And just to get an idea, I then at one point removed them, cleaned the whole mouth up real nice, made the mold, casted the mask. And once the mask was casted and I had a copy in my hands, then I took Super Sculpey and made the dentures out of Super Sculpey. And I'm not going to go too into that tonight because that is a subject that we're going to be covering here for everybody uh, down the road very soon on how to make dentures for your monsters. So out of Super Sculpey. And I'm going to cover what clays I use and how I actually do that process We'll be doing it on a resin piece, but I'll down the road be doing it on a mask as well. So we'll cover all that. But yeah, basically, he's pretty much right on. I made them after the fact for the most part. So I always just rough them in on the on the sculpt just to get an idea of what I'm going after. And then once that's done, once you have the mask in hand, then you can make your dentures for your mask out of uh, a different clay. You can you can use uh, other clays. You don't have to use Super Sculpey, but I'm going to show you guys how I do it with Super Sculpey down the road. And the cool thing with the Super Sculpey is you get a nice realistic look of how it's going to finally look. Now, all that being said, these that you see here are not Super Sculpey. These are translucent resin because I molded out of silicone the Super Sculpey teeth and then casted them in a translucent resin and that way I can make multiple copies every time I have to make this mask. I don't have to sculpt the teeth over and over again, which would be, you know, a lot of work. Uh, yeah, so that's that. Next question. All right, Casey, we've got uh, Mac McNeil. He asks, do you ever paint the refraction of light in the bottom part of the eye to fake depth, i.e. that soft crescent shape just below the pupil that mimics a light source? I, I hope that makes sense. Yep. Yeah, I know exactly what he's talking about. So what we would have done when we base coated this eye uh, on this side, and, and I do do that sometimes. I didn't do it tonight, but sometimes I do do it. He's What he's talking about is um, there's down on the bottom here where there would be more light than the top. Actually, I do more than that, Matt. I do uh, something else where I shadow the top of the eye. But because this eye is so opened and pushed out, it doesn't really need it, I don't find. But let's say the the eyelid was normal, like pulled down normally over the eye. So then I would actually paint a shadow over the top of the eye uh, from the eyelid because that creates a shadow over your eye. And then the down below here, you can do the half crescent moon light blue. So you would do a much lighter blue crescent shape just kind of around that pupil, but not going all the way around the eye. So just on the bottom. And so you'd have a darker blue up here and then a light here. So what that does is it creates like a highlight in the eye. Then you paint all your layers over like what you saw me do tonight. You paint all those layers and then you've got like a dark top and a lighter bottom highlight. And it just gives you a natural looking highlight. So yeah, that's a great way to do it. Thank you for the question, Matt. Appreciate that. Awesome. All right, Casey, we've got a couple more here to knock out. We've got... Uh... Uh, Ramon Linaresworth, and I really apologize for butchering the last name there, Ramon. Uh, he asks, "Do you use, or what do you use to thin the paint?" Okay, great question. Thank you, Ramon. Um, so tonight, mostly what we use to thin the paint when we were doing brush work, actually using a brush, was uh, either the Citadel uh, 
Limian, Limian, medium. I don't know what that's called. A me, it's a uh, Citadel medium. You know, he can shoot it there. Um, or we were using water. You know, a little bit of water. Now, when we were airbrushing, we were thinning with a little bit of water and then a little bit of alcohol. But that's not with the brushwork because you know, if you have alcohol and you do brushwork, you can wipe away things. Now, I did do a few tricks at the end with the blind eye with alcohol paint on a brush but i was only dabbing it i wasn't rubbing it because if you rub it you're going to take paint off it's just dabbing and letting the paint spill out and do its own thing with the alcohol <clears throat> so basically that was it for thinning tonight and uh, ramon thank you for the question all righty let's see uh, oh, okay. Uh, Spooky Threads asks, does Casey ever use Flow Improver to thin out his paints? No. Uh, I Wait, I do have something I used to use for washes occasionally called Flow, flow Troll or Flow... No, Flow something. Flow Medium. I don't know. Um, I've used it before. I, I don't use it a lot, to be honest. I, these are new things I like to use. These, um, Citadel, uh, little things. They're expensive though. You know, this little bottle is like eight bucks and you go through it pretty quick. Yeah. Um, but no, I, I don't have too many flow things that I use like mediums and stuff that I add to paint. Um, pretty much water and what you're seeing tonight is is it you know and this is a new one tonight i'm this is you guys watch me actually just try something new tonight right in front of you with it and with never trying it before not knowing if it'd work or not i just there you go experimenting and i did it right before you guys so there you go and now i love that stuff and that's what i will be using for future eye painting because it it makes the paint just flow so nice off the brush now you may find another brand like you're talking about that that does the same thing if it works great use it Thank you for the question. All right, Casey, that's just about it. We've got uh, our one more item from Ramon who asks, what number of brush do you use for vein work? Uh, we have that, that same brush that you use this evening linked, but uh, um, here, I'll put that let, up me, again. let me hold these up and, sure. and we can get a shot of these too. So one of them is a 100-0, uh, but I've had 100 zeros before, and they're not this thin. So this is unique. This is very thin. I mean, that's why I was joking and said it should be a thousand zero. And then this, the big brush I was using is a three zero Princeton Select round, which these are cheap. You can get these at craft stores or or Dick Blick. Yeah. So uh, a three zero and a 100 zero. And um, I mean, if you go to the store and you can't find a 100 zero this thin, just that's fine. As long as you get one very thin like this, you can, it'll, it'll do the job. You'll get some nice hairline veins in there. So there you go. Those are the brushes. Awesome. Thank you, Casey. That, that wraps up our questions for tonight. Awesome. Awesome. Great. Well, uh, a couple of things I want to cover before we end the show. Um, one, our giveaway, which is coming up. We'll talk about that for a sec again. Just uh, for those that weren't here at the beginning of the stream, we are going to be doing our first giveaway once we reach our first thousand subscribers. We're getting closer, guys. We're getting closer. You know, anyone you know that might be interested in the show, in the show or, or uh, subscribing to the show, We'd love to have them. And uh, simple is just going over to our YouTube channel, hitting the like button, hitting the subscribe button, and boom, that just adds a person every time and we get keep growing. So once we get to that thousand, we will give away 10 sets of these guys all painted up for you. And you might be one of those lucky winners. And if not, we're going to do other giveaways down the road. So it's just a way to give back and say thank you to you guys for uh, subscribing and supporting the show. Um, let's also talk real quick. We have, um, you can catch us if you'd like to join, uh, off, off the show during the week. If you have nothing going on and you want to just catch up on Monday night monster jam stuff, we have our Facebook page, which is our Facebook group for Monday night monster jam on Facebook. You can, uh, subscribe or, or join to that. We can get you in there and, uh, you can share your work. If you're doing work, you can see what others are doing and sharing. You can learn from others. Um, and it's just a great community that's growing strong and fast. I mean, I think we're almost up to 500 people where last time we, last Monday we were at 211. Yep. 
we're now just breaking 200. Yeah, <laughs> now we're over five. Well, we're uh, we're getting close to 500. Yeah, and, some amazing artwork already posted up there. It's yeah, incredible, awesome to see. Really great stuff. Really great sharing going on. I'm super stoked about that. So you can. Uh, between Monday shows, you can catch that if you want to uh, uh, join in and, and, you know, just see what's going on even. And um, you can catch me, more of my stuff on Instagram from Casey Love Designs is my Instagram. I also have a second Instagram, which is actually Casey Love Paintworks. And we do have an Instagram for Monday Night Monster Jam, which is up there. If you look it up, you can you can uh, uh, join that as well. We're going to start building that. You can also catch me just on my Facebook, which is KC Love. Simple as that. And um, my website, which is www.kclovemonsters.com. And I think that wraps it up. Yep. Anything from you guys? Nope, not for me. Hope you guys um, enjoyed the show. Yes. Thank you again for joining us for another Monday Night Monster Jam. Be sure to hit that or smash that like button. Give us a like and help us out and get some people to subscribe. We would greatly appreciate all your help. Tune in next week, too. Tune in next week. We'll have another awesome demo for you. And we'll see you then. Ryan, you want to say out? Say something? All right. Thanks, everybody, for the awesome questions tonight. And Casey and Matt for the... Uh... Amazing camera work and, and killer tutorial, Casey. This is one that I'll be keeping in my notes for quite some time. Awesome. Yes. And if people have questions, that's the other great thing about the Facebook page. Let's say you have a question from a previous stream. You can go on to that Facebook page and ask that question, and I'll eventually get around to answering that, usually right away, but I'll get around to it. So it's a great place to ask questions about stuff that happened on the stream that maybe you didn't get a chance to ask during the stream. All right. That's it. So care, folks. we're out. Thank you so much. See you next time.